perhaps has more songs and fewer speeches. <laughs> I would like to uh, congratulate the soloists in the choir. That was an absolutely uh, splendid performance. And it did seem to me there was one line that uh, came through and struck me particularly when you sung it. The answers, it said, the answers are all up to me. And in terms of everyone's own individual endeavour, I do believe that is true. Nobody, particularly if I may say so, none of the pupils here today should believe anything other than that. What is there to be achieved in the future for you, and in future your families and your friends, is up to you. And it's here I hope that you will lay the groundwork and the basis to actually achieve those particular ambitions. <coughs> I'm very pleased to have the opportunity of sharing with you today the opening of this absolutely splendid school. It is my first visit to a city technology college. Clearly it was overdue. Even in a very brief uh, tour of the, of the college, there's been ample opportunity for me to be very impressed both at what I've seen, but also at the enthusiasm, at the atmosphere, in the belief that is here about what is happening. And all that is uh, very encouraging. And it's a great privilege for a few moments to share the enthusiasm of being part of what I believe is a very significant, significant innovation indeed in our education uh, system. Let me let you into a secret that isn't actually much of a secret. I actually enjoyed school uh, many years ago. And to be frank, I couldn't wait to leave it. It didn't seem at the time to uh, be offering me a great deal. And in many ways, the education uh, there and the education system generally seemed fairly repressive then to me, more of a straitjacket than an opportunity. Now, happily, that has changed, and I think at the moment it is changing more rapidly than it has done for very many years in the past. The purpose of education is not just, it seems to me, to teach people to add up two and two and make four rather than 22. But it is to equip people in each and every aspect to enable them to be able to fulfill their own ambitions in later life. And from what I have read about your college and from what I've seen of it today, I believe the scope and activities and disciplines and self-disciplines of the CTC will help you to do that far more ably than many people may perhaps realise at the present moment. I've had all too brief an opportunity to see just a little of the range that's available, technology, arts, computers, the emphasis so critical for all our futures uh, of science and technology. But it isn't just a matter, I think, of the individual ambitions of all the pupils who are here and who will be here in the future. Of course it is about that. But it is, I think, about a little more than that as well. Because each individual person who succeeds and achieves their own ambitions in their own interests and in the interests of their own families add up to achieve the ambitions of the country as a whole as well. Because our future in this country depends not just on what is done by a few captains of industry or a few leading scientists or technologists or politicians. Our future predominantly depends on the skills that you're learning here and that uh, other young people throughout the country are learning in their education as well. The success of your future, based upon what you learn here, uh, will determine the success of our future generally as a country as well. For it is a competitive world into which people go when they leave the education system more competitive perhaps today than ever it has been before. And upon the success of that competition will depend the success of our country and the individual living standards and security of everyone who will live in it in the future. Now here in this CTC, as you reach the very nearly the end of your first year, there is an enormous amount that you can look back on with a considerable degree of pride impressive standards of work and discipline. Like the other city technology colleges, a rather longer school day and year than elsewhere in the education system. Performance targets agreed to raise standards still further. 
prize giving evenings and certificates profiling performance both in and out of the classroom. And I have been uh, particularly impressed in the briefing that I have been given about this college, particularly impressed by the programs which the students have devised to achieve their targets on mutual respect between students and staff. And it did occur to me when I saw a little more of that this morning that perhaps we could learn something of that and I could encourage some of my parliamentary colleagues to indulge in a similar program. And then attendance at around 90%. Of course, <coughs> attendance should be 90%, even higher than this. But what a considerable contrast it is to the average of only 75% last year before the school became a CTC. Truancy declining and attendance rising is something else I believe you can be very proud of. And also, I think, perhaps one of the clearest signs of success. <clears throat> Not only are you here finding it worthwhile, but many other students want to come here and join you. 650 applications for the 180 places available from this September. And that compared to only 50 first choice applications before you became a CTC. And not only before you became a CTC, before I got hay fever, which you can hear uh, is around this morning. <clears throat> so this City Technology College is a success. A success that reflects the spirit of cooperation and partnership, which is so evident in every part of the school. <clears throat> I believe that is a characteristic, not just of this school, certainly of this school, but not just of that but of the CTC program as a whole. Because together, the government and the sponsors in partnership are establishing 15 colleges like yours uh, across the country. And I would like to pay a very special and a very warm tribute to Philip and Pauline Harris, to David Lewis, and to the other sponsors. They have together contributed the very remarkable sum of one and three quarter million pounds of support to this college. Not only that, but they continue to play a very active role, for I know that Philip is a very regular visitor here. And I think that is not just a remarkable tribute to them, it is a remarkable, <coughs> a remarkable tribute to what they believe you can achieve in this college. And the greatest reward for them, I believe, will to be seeing you achieve it, as you clearly are now beginning to do. But this CTC illustrates other things as well. It illustrates the benefits of partnership with the local education authority. I'm absolutely delighted to see representatives of Croydon Education Authority here today. Their support is of very great value, and I could only regret in saying that, that other local authorities within your catchment area have not reacted quite so positively yet, but I hope in due course they will. Because all of us in the education system want to see excellence above all things. And I believe in this CTC you are achieving excellence. I believe other people will see that and they will want to ensure that that excellence is firstly maintained here, but secondly is spread elsewhere. And whatever the education authorities may have said in some areas, the teachers in other areas often have a different view. For I know that teachers from other authorities that perhaps do not approve of CTCs have taken matters in their own hands and contacted your school. Frankly, I applaud their action in doing so, and I hope it will lead others to see sense. Each and every one of the CTCs are pioneers. But I am delighted that this CTC, the Harris CTC, is pioneering in two areas in particular. Firstly, the Dyslexia Center. It's a dyslexia center partly funded by grant from the Department of Education and Science. CTCs are about offering a first-class education to every boy and girl, and dealing with this long-standing but often ignored problem of dyslexia is a further indication that this CTC is determined to provide an excellent education for everyone, even those facing this particular difficulty. And then secondly, there's the carrying out of a pilot technological baccalaureate scheme. It is absolutely vital for our future that we find ways of enhancing the vocational content of education. And the tech bank you have here 
combines both the vocational and the academic. It deserves to be an enormous success, and I believe myself that it will prove to be so. Just a few moments ago, the choir sung beautifully, as I mentioned a moment ago, a song, One Moment in Time. Well, this is a special moment in time. It is the moment in which the Harris Technology Center officially becomes open. It's a moment in which the opening of this helps to endorse a new experiment in education that I believe will prove immensely successful and pioneer improvements in education that we will wish to see spread very widely to everyone who enjoys our educational uh, system. So it is a very special moment in time and it gives me the very greatest of personal pleasure to declare the Harris City Technology College officially open. Today launched a far-reaching shake-up in state education. 
The most radical proposal involves GCSE exams, which will be tougher, with more emphasis on exam results than course work. Mr Major also wants to increase substantially the number of state schools switching to grant-maintained status. He said the changes would sweep away the political extremism and bureaucratic inefficiency which thwart parents' wishes. The Prime Minister began his day visiting one of the country's seven city technology colleges before expounding on what's become one of his big political ideas, the future of education. Posterity was clearly very much on Mr Major's mind as he deposited a miniature cricket bat in a time capsule at the school. In his speech later, Mr Major detailed a series of reforms, including simplifying testing, which he conceded hadn't gone as well as planned. It is early days, and I readily accept that we may not have got the process right yet. Where it is wrong, we will change it. Testing must not dominate the classroom. It must not swamp schools in paperwork, nor should it be driven by too theoretical an approach. We need to shift the emphasis towards shorter, standardized tests, which the whole class can take at one time. He said GCSEs would become more exam orientated. There'd be changes to allow more schools to opt out or become CTCs and more information for parents. But I want to see more. For example, information about numbers staying on at 16. I also want to turn the school inspector into the parent's friend. This is BBC One. The One O'Clock News from the BBC with Philip Hayton. Good afternoon. The Prime Minister has announced new measures to increase the number of city technology colleges. At an education conference in London, John Major outlined legislation which would make it easier for existing schools to opt out and become grant-maintained CTCs. Hoping to prove education is top of his agenda, Mr Major is having a schools day, starting at Harris City Technology College, one of the new breed of schools concentrating on science and technology. Planned as... The visit was part of a day of education-related visits, which included a speech given at the Café Royal in London, in which he praised such colleges. The Harris City Technology College in Upper Norwood is one of only six in the country. There are 800 pupils in the school with an age range from 11 to 18 years old. The college offers GCSE and A-level courses, as well as national diplomas. The school opened in September 1990 to provide another strand of education. Its purpose is to provide courses that may not be found in other conventional schools. The Prime Minister arrived at the college to be met by a selection of VIPs, including the main sponsors, Sir Philip and Lady Harris, the Vice Principal, Andy Halpin, and the Deputy Principal, Stephanie Bedford. He then moved on to be greeted by two of the student receptionists, James Farrell from Crystal Palace and Lisa Head from Dulwich, both aged 12. During his walkabout, he was introduced to four faculty directors and then moved on to the technology block where Year 7 students were building light-sensing circuits, part of a national curriculum project. The Prime Minister then moved on to the courtyard where the pupils had prepared their own time capsule. Among the items deposited in the time capsule were a miniature cricket bat which was signed by the Prime Minister and Mrs Major. Right. Can I help me post it? Right. Ready? <laughs> right, I think that can go in. And the cricket bat can go in. I think we were all midgets. Because they'll think we were very tiny. <laughs> Prime Minister, what do you see as the benefits of a college such as this? Well, I think you should you'd do better to ask the, uh, the youngsters who are here. Uh, if you go around the school and you see what's happening, I think you can see the, uh, well, you can see the way the youngsters feel about it. Uh, I suppose many of you know the difficulties the school that was on this site had before. You can see the amazing difference. Uh, there's a tremendous degree of motivation. Everyone's very keen to come here. 
rather than finding it difficult for pupils to come, it's very heavily oversubscribed. And I think that's uh, an indication of the success it's had. Don't you think so? Yes, yeah, good. On the board, it, is it is early days, and I readily accept that we may not have got the process right yet. Where it is wrong, we will change it. His proposals amount to a significant modification of the reforms. Mr. Major wants testing simplified to concentrate on the three R's. He says GCSEs should be changed so that at least 80% of marks are based on exams rather than coursework. On grant-maintained schools, he wants to make it easier to opt out of local authority control. And city technology colleges will be broadened in scope, so more schools are eligible. On behalf of Sir Philip Harris, our Chairman of Governors and our governing body, welcome to the official opening of the Dyslexia Centre. Our guests include uh, Duncan Goodhue, former Olympic uh, swimmer, uh, who have something special to say for our dyslexic students, I'm sure. Uh, our sponsors, representatives from the Department of Education and Science, the CTC Chief Executive, other CTC principals, uh, the Principal and VP and our research partners from Christchurch College, Canterbury, members of the Harris Project team, governors, parents, students, representatives from the Dyslexia Associations and Institute, the Database Nottingham uh, Company Limited and Apricot Computers Limited, who have uh, done a lot to sponsor uh, this afternoon's event, and a special thank you to them, and uh, senior officers of uh, Croydon. Uh, local Education uh, Authority. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for that welcome. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here uh, for a number of reasons. I think um, what has been said about the government's involvement is significant. Uh, for them to put in a quarter of a million pounds to research in dis into dyslexia is great news. I think it's needed and it's, I think it's about time. Well done. And I'm also glad to hear another £50,000 is com coming to, to help in the evenings to help dyslexics who perhaps have left school but want to do something about it, which I think is fantastic. There are about one dyslexic in every 25 people uh, in this country. That's an enormous number if you think about it. In fact, it goes down to the fact that there's about one dyslexic in every class in this country. The problem is enormous, and I'm glad to see that in my local area here, because I've lived down in, in Sydenham, and Wells Park Road, and Sydenham Park Road, and I now live in Camberwell, that something is being done to help dyslexics. Now, why have I been picked to come along here to pull a curtain and cut a ribbon? Well, the truth is that I'm dyslexic myself. In fact, I'd like to ask, who is dyslexic? Anybody dyslexic? Hands up here. Oh, we seem to be outnumbering it. <laughs> well, welcome to the exclusive club. You might like to know who else is in this club. Well, there's all of you. There's myself, there's Jackie Stewart, there's Susan Hampshire, there's Tom Cruise, Michael Heseltine, Leonardo da Vinci, Sir Winston Churchill, um, Einstein, Shakespeare, to name just a few. It's not a bad club to be in. So um, I think what is significant in life is sometimes the axiom adversity makes or breaks is very true. Because when you have adversity, when things aren't going your way, you turn around and you look at the world and you think, hang on, 
What's going on? Where are my strengths? Where are my weaknesses? When you're dyslexic, you know where your weaknesses are, don't you? So you look for some strengths. And let me tell you, it happened to me when I was eight years old. I was sitting in an English class and the teacher walked in and said, Duncan, would you read, please? And I got up and opened the book, looked down at the paragraph and started to read. After the first few words, I stuttered and stammered to a halt and I couldn't get any further. And um, after a few moments, the class started to giggle. And it wasn't until I was 14 years old, I found out I was dyslexic. And uh, I think all of you who are dyslexic knows what, know, knows what that was like, trying to read in front of that class. But what it did do is it made me look around to find something I was good at, and I found swimming, and I didn't let go. Uh, but just having a goal of a sport isn't much good either. Um, I don't know if you know it, but Mexicans are great shots. They never miss the target. What they do is they put this paper up all around the range, you see. They walk down to the far end of the range and they pick up their West German rifles that are you know, manufactured perfectly and they're very accurate. And what's more, they're automatic. So they slip it on the automatic catch and pull the triggers and all the bullets almost come out at the same time. And they go down to the end of the range through the piece of paper uh, and, and the grouping is real good because all those bullets have come out of the rifle at almost the same time. And they walk up to this hole, these holes in the paper, this really tight grouping, and draw the target round the holes <laughs> so they never miss. Now the secret about life is actually drawing a, 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 a target before and aiming for it. And I think today uh, the dyslexic people here have a chance to say, hey, let's look at what I'm good at, uh, and let's go forward and see if we can hit some targets. And a special congratulation for those people who uh, actually have hit some targets with their designs, etc., that we've given today. Um, I think that's enough from me. I could talk on dyslexia for m many hours, because I think it is, a, it is something that um, over the last 10 years has been recognized, and rightly so, because dyslexics perhaps don't have the greatest skills with reading and writing, but they tend to have a much greater lateral vision uh, which perhaps is uh, described by the, the exclusive club um, that I mentioned. Those people had vision beyond the, the normal person. And I feel that the dyslexics have a great, um, have great um, future uh, and, and can offer industry as well as art uh, a lot. Uh, so it's a great pleasure and a privilege to, to declare the Harris Dyslexia Centre now open.